Hi viewers, I'm Aditi Singh and you're tuned in to My India. India is currently immersed in election frenzy with the largest democratic exercise in the world ongoing in the country. And with a staggering 969 million people eligible to vote, a number surpassing the combined populations of Europe and Australia, well, this election is a monumental event. Both the Election Commission of India and political parties are passionately engaged in campaigns to educate citizens about their constitutional rights. So let's embark on a journey through the vibrant tapestry of diversity, unity and above all, the empowering force of the people. Join me as we explore further. In the grand tapestry of democratic fervor, India's elections stand as a dazzling spectacle, unmatched in its scale and vibrancy. With over 900 million eligible voters, the electoral canvas unfurls across the nation, reaching every nook and cranny in its embrace. Approximately 2,400 political parties vie for the coveted 543 Lok Sabha seats, each offering their vision for the nation's destiny. This is वो स्पोर्ट्समैन स्पिरिट को पैदा करते हैं प्रतिस्पर्धा भी जब खेल का मैदान होता है तो देखने वाले खेलने वाले स्पोर्ट्समैन स्पिरिट का एक एनवायरनमेंट क्रिएट होता है जो हमारे संस्कार बन जाते हैं चुनाव का ये माहौल अगर हम उत्सव में पलट दें लोकोत्सव बना दें तो हमारी रगों में डेमोक्रेसी आने वाली पीढ़ियों के रगों में वो संस्कार बन जाते हैं Behind this colorful facade lies a massive undertaking of organization and dedication. Nearly 15 million government employees step into the limelight, choreographing this democratic ballet with precision and grace. Their tireless efforts transform mere logistics into the world's largest democratic exercise, ensuring that every citizen's voice finds resonance in the halls of power. And here's Rajan Kumar, the Election Commission of India's brand ambassador, who has initiated a unique voter awareness program. I'm in Kashmir, I'm in the world, I'm in the world, I'm in the world, I'm in the world, I'm in the general election. So, in this way, we have a moral duty that we have to appeal to all the people that you have to vote. First, the people of the world, then the people of the world. जी तो ये कश्मीर से हमारा सफर शुरू हो गया है जो कि कन्या कुमारी स्वामी वेकानंद मेमोरियल रॉक पे जाके खत्म होने वाली है। The elections conducted in seven phases unfold like chapters in an epic saga spanning weeks of anticipation and fervor. Now this phased approach is not just a logistical necessity, but a testament to the democratic ethos, ensuring that every voter from the bustling metropolis to the remote hamlet has their moment in the sun. Meet Noor Mohammed, an independent candidate hailing from Coimbatore, a city in the southern state of Tamil Nadu. Noor's election campaign has taken a remarkably creative turn. Clad in attire reminiscent of a Hindu mythological character, Noor Mohammed captivates the streets of Coimbatore, weaving through the bustling crowds with an aura of mystique. With pamphlets in hand, he engages with the people, not merely as a candidate, but as a storyteller of democracy's tale. And here's Jyoti Amge, the world's shortest woman who exercised her voting rights and even appealed to voters to cast their votes and fulfill their duty. Jyoti Amge holds the Guinness World Record for being the world's shortest woman. Her height is 2 feet and 0 0.07 inches tall.
India's democratic elections trace back to 1951 to 1952, when the first general election saw voters electing 489 members of the first Lok Sabha, the lower house of parliament. This marked a significant milestone as it granted both men and women equal voting rights, distinguishing India from many other nations. The International Monetary Fund has forecast a robust growth trajectory for India's economy, projecting positive momentum despite global uncertainties. With its burgeoning middle class, robust domestic demand and ongoing reforms, India is poised to sustain its upward trajectory. The world's attention is increasingly turning towards India which has become a favoured investment destination thanks to its robust economy. Recently, the South Asian nation achieved the milestone of becoming the fifth largest economy globally, marking a significant step in its economic journey. Projections suggest that India is well positioned to break into the top three economies worldwide, with the GDP touching $7 trillion by 2030. This remarkable ascent underscores India's growing potential and solidifies its reputation as an attractive hub for investors seeking promising opportunities. The International Monetary Fund, the IMF, forecasts a robust growth trajectory for India's economy, projecting positive momentum despite global uncertainties. If you look at the, um, you know, the Indian economy now, um, Ever since COVID, it has you know, grown consistently at 7% plus, um, uh, you know, 9.7% um, the year after COVID, then 7%. And then this year, if you look at the first three quarters, 8.2%, 8.1%, and 8.4% growth in the first three quarters. So even with a much lower 7.3% growth, if it so happens actually in the fourth quarter, you know, India will average, uh, you know, 8% growth. And I think that is very good, you know, in the current global economic situation, as I said, you know, 32 percent one percent, um, you know, uh, expectation for the global economy. With a burgeoning middle class, India boasts a consumer base that continues to drive consumption and investment across various sectors. The nation's vibrant and expanding workforce, predominantly youthful in composition, stands as a driving force behind its economic vitality. Spearheaded by initiatives such as Make in India and a series of strategic economic reforms, the government has focused on revitalizing the manufacturing sector, streamlining business processes and enticing foreign direct investment. These concerted efforts not only enhance the nation's industrial landscape, but also cultivate an environment conducive to business growth and innovation positioning the country as an increasingly attractive destination for both domestic and international investors. In India, you know, pre-2014, productivity growth annually was 1.3 percent, um, the rate of productivity growth. In contrast, the rate of productivity growth post-2014 has been 2.7 percent. That is more than double. And I think that is a very important driver, you know, for growth to continue to be, you know, a high uh, and, and for it to be sustainable going forward. As per Morgan Stanley, India's per capita income will increase from 2,200 USD in 2023 to about 5,200 by 2032, which will have major implications on consumption. Economists believe it will boost domestic demand, leading to robust economic growth. The main reason for this growth is the home consumption and domestic uh, demand, which is increasing, and home consumption and domestic uh, demand increases because of the increase in the purchasing power, which quite indicate that, yes, Indian peoples are earning more or they are getting uh, their uh, whatever is the uh, per capita income that's also rising. India's demographic dividend, with a large population of young and dynamic workers, presents immense potential for sustained growth and innovation. 
As India continues to strengthen its economic fundamentals and implement forward-thinking reforms, its appeal as a dynamic center for business and innovation continues to grow, capturing the interests of the global community and affirming its role as a beacon of prosperity in the modern era. Moving on, Taj Bagh Sharif, the shrine of Sufi saint Tajuddin Aulia in western Indian state of Maharashtra, embodies religious unity and harmony, attracting diverse devotees, including Hindus and Muslims. The shrine in Nagpur city fosters interfaith camaraderie, drawing believers from afar to unite in reverence for Baba, transcending religious boundaries and fostering solidarity and tranquility. Taj Bagh, often known as Taj Sharif, in the heart of Nagpur city in India's western state, is considered the epitome of interfaith harmony. For centuries, the river Darga of the Sufi saint Hazrat Baba Taljuddin Aulia has served as a common destination for diverse communities that come together to pay their sincere tributes to him. The Sufi shrine has always cultivated a friendly bond among communities to maintain peace and harmony in society. हम हिंदू हैं यहाँ पे ताज बाबा के दरबार में सब हिंदू मुस्लिम सब दर्शन करने आते हैं सालों से आ रहे हैं और आते रहेंगे और सभी कोमी एकता के ये मिसाल हैं। The centuries-old Darga draws thousands of devotees every day, whether they be Hindus, Muslims, Sikhs or Christians, to come together to offer prayers and seek blessings from the revered saint. Moreover, it is also believed that the devotees never return empty-handed from the shrine and that all their wishes come true upon coming here. Devotees often find the Islamic architecture very peaceful. Therefore, they come to meditate and seek solace while connecting with their inner selves. Mohabbat ka ye gahwara hai Taj Bagh, jahan se mohabbat jo hai batti hai. Ganga Jamni Tahzeeb ka station hai Taj Bagh. Baba Tajuddin ka dayar hai. During his lifetime, it is said that the saint, through amazing miracles, helped many to get rid of their problems and guided them towards spiritual development regardless of their religious background. In remembrance of the Sufi saint, people every day, irrespective of their religious backgrounds, lay chadars and flowers along with other religious offerings at the holy grave of the revered Sufi saint. Following in his footsteps, his followers run a trust in his name which imparts education and medical services to people. Here is a lot of people who believe in the whole of Nagpur. People believe in the whole of India. Baba is so proud of him. और हम लोग भी यहाँ मतलब जब से ससुराल आए हैं तब से हम यहाँ ताजबाग दर्शन करने के लिए आ रहे हैं यहाँ तक कि हमारे फ्रेंड लोग भी आए यहाँ तीस साल के बाद दर्शन के लिए हम उनको भी लेकर सभी लोग बोलते हैं कि हमारे लिए दुआ करिए ताकि ताजुद्दीन बाबा बुलाए हमें दर्शन के लिए इतनी प्रसिद्धि है ताजुद्दीन बाबा की Sufism had flourished for centuries across the world to preach love and emphasize devotion to God. And with the same goal, Saint Taujuddin Aulia served society throughout his life. Moreover, the teachings of Sufism also cultivates a deep and personal connection with God, aiming for spiritual growth. Now, Let's delve into World in Focus, featuring the latest global developments and events shaping our world. Gukesh Domaraju became the youngest player to win the men's candidates chess tournament after a draw against Hikaru Nakamura on a nail-biting final day of the double round robin event in Toronto on April 21. The 17-year-old Grandmaster effectively wrapped the victory in the tournament after American Fabiano Caruana blundered a winning position against Russian Ian Nepomniachi to be held to a draw. 
the youngest winner of a candidate's tournament was Gary Kasparov, who was 20 when he prevailed in 1984, a year before sealing the World Championship title against fellow Russian Anatoly Karpov. Gukesh, who was one of the three Indian players in the eight-man candidates tournament, will face China's Ding Liren for the title later this year. A few years ago, Karina Marakshina had to explain what K-pop was when asked to describe the musical style of her Moscow dance studio. Now she says she hears it blasting in nearly every mall where she shops. Russia shares a lengthy border with China and has long fostered strong cultural ties to East Asia. But as sanctions have made it harder to access Western cultural products like film and music, younger Russians in particular are turning to countries like South Korea, Japan and China for entertainment. Marakshina's K-pop dance school GSS Studio started in 2016 with only two groups practicing in halls rented by the R. It now has thousands of students practicing in three big studios in Moscow and more in other cities. The 22-year-old says the studio has experienced a boom in interest as the music and dance style becomes more visible in Russia. Scientists are using AI to find potential new medicines in plants. They say artificial intelligence can predict which unexplored plant species might hold potential for novel treatments. The new study centers around what they call the plant tree of life, which is essentially a family tree of plants. Scientists are hoping that unlocking the plant tree of life could even help find solutions to challenges like climate change, conservation and food security. A team at London's Royal Botanic Gardens, Q, has sequenced the DNA of more than 9,500 flowering plants, including 800 species for the first time. It is expected to help in the discovery of new medicinal compounds by cross-referencing the genetic sequences with known medicinal properties, AI can predict which unexplored plant species might hold potential for novel treatments. In addition to medicinal discovery, the data will assist in identifying new species, refining plant classification and supporting conservation efforts. The team has made all the data accessible to encourage more discoveries from the plant tree of life. Over the past few years, India's idyllic islands of Andaman and Nicobar and Lakshwadeep have experienced a significant surge in tourist footfall, captivating visitors from all around the world. But what is exactly fueling this newfound fascination? Let's delve into the reasons behind this tourism boom. With their captivating crystal clear waters, breathtaking landscapes and warm hospitality, India's Andaman and Nicobar Islands are unquestionably emerging as prime destinations on the global tourism stage. Their untouched natural beauty, coupled with a myriad of activities spanning from thrilling water sports to immersing oneself in indigenous cultures, are drawing tourists in droves. Among the various islands, there's a spectrum of beaches, some bustling with tourists and others offering serene seclusion, ideal for private family holidays. Local authorities have made commendable efforts in maintaining clean beaches and ensuring well-maintained facilities for visitors, contributing to a memorable stay experience. It's a wonderful experience in Andamans. And I, I mean, such beautiful turquoise blue waters. You don't have to go to Bangkok and Pattaya or Maldives. I think Andaman is a place where there's a lot of beautiful places in India. And I think Andaman should be promoted as the next tourist destination so that people from all around the world can come over here. The burgeoning tourism in these islands is a testament to the government's steadfast commitment to sustainable tourism development. 
Authorities have prioritized preserving the island's natural beauty, while simultaneously enhancing infrastructure and services to meet the needs of both residents and visitors. Everything seems very good. All the facilities everywhere, like on the beach or any place, it's clean and everything is very good. So I think definitely the government has worked. Similarly, the picturesque Lakshwadeep Islands have become sought-after beach destination in India. The shimmering blue waters, silky sands, charming cottages, huts and shacks along with various water sport activities collectively offer an unforgettable beach experience. Lakshwadeep garnered global attention following Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit in January, where his snorkeling adventure and leisurely moments on the scenic beaches made waves on social media. Since then, many Indians have favored Lakshwadeep as an alternative to the Maldives, resulting in a notable increase in inquiries about tourism packages offered by Lakshwadeep tourism, both domestically and internationally. So post is visit, we have been receiving a lot of inquiries. People are very curious to know about more, you know, uh, more about tourism packages that Lakshadweep tourism offers. And the kind of in inquiries that we are receiving from the international, um, uh, this thing, uh, from the national tourism arena as well as the international tourism market is very huge. This shift in sentiment has sparked a trend that has captured the attention of social media users, travel enthusiasts, and even Bollywood celebrities. India's culture stands as one of the most unique and ancient in the world. Today, people from all corners of the globe are drawn to India's arts and traditions and this is evident by increasing prominence of Indian arts on international platforms with Indian dance forms particularly captivating audiences abroad. Across the world, people are learning India's centuries-old dance traditions, not only enriching the country's cultural heritage but also amplifying India's soft power globally. With anklets adorned on their feet, wearing traditional Indian attire and sparkling jewelry, you might mistake these dancers for Indian natives. However, they are Russian women who have mastered the art of Indian classical dance, kata. Performances of this classical dance are regularly hosted at the State Museum of Oriental Art in Russia. Playing a significant role in promoting Katak worldwide is Ashwani Nigam, a guru who has dedicated the last 30 years to this endeavor. И мысль не только семейные, не только божественные, и могут быть другие аспекты, которые относят наш обычай жизни. The Indian government is actively engaged in promoting classical Indian dance among foreigners, showcasing its rich heritage on international platforms. And this initiative has drawn numerous foreign artists to immerse themselves in the intricacies of Indian classical dance forms. India has been making numerous efforts to promote classical dance forms globally, organizing events and workshops to showcase its richness and attract foreign enthusiasts. These endeavors not only contribute to the enhancement of India's cultural heritage, but also strengthen its international relations through cultural diplomacy. The Indian Council for Cultural Relations, the ICCR, consistently strives in this direction. हमारे लिए बहुत गर्व की और खुशी की बात है कि वैसे तो भारत के लिए हमेशा से बाहर में एक उत्साह और एक तरह का शौक बाहर में रहा है भारतीय कला को सीखने का। लेकिन हाल के कुछ दिनों में ये जो उत्साह है और ये जो ये जो उनका जो शौक है भारतीय कला सीखने का वो बढ़ता जा रहा है। तो हम लोग अपने सांस्कृतिक केंद्रों में जो कथक के क्लासेज हैं या जो 
भरतनाट्यम क्लासेस करा रहे हैं उनमें धीरे धीरे छात्रों की संख्या बढ़ रही है वहाँ पे भारत से जो शिक्षकों की डिप, जो डिपटेशन होती है उसकी डिमांड बढ़ रही है and who I am, so I've always wanted to promote to everyone, especially in the UK, seeing as it's a different place so we can promote my culture, so I want to promote the culture and the challenges I face is, is getting many opportunities to promote the culture, but as time went on, uh, there's more opportunities and I'm very thankful to ICCR. And Indian classical dance comes in various forms such as Kathak, Bharatanatyam, Odissi and Kuchipudi, all of which have gained considerable popularity overseas. India boasts several states where diverse communities have their unique dance styles, some of which are thousands of years old. This diversity is one of the country's major legacies, attracting people from all over the world. India has recognized the importance of its soft power and in recent years has showcased its extraordinary dances on international platforms, including prestigious events, continuously elevating the stature of these art forms. This not only preserves the country's rich heritage, but also establishes India as a distinct identity worldwide. India's classical dance forms serve as bridges connecting cultures across borders, enriching lives and fostering mutual understanding. Well, that's all for today's show. We will see you next week at the same time. Goodbye and take care.